So welcome everybody again to uh, this session. This is the first session of three and is, uh, is a session on uh, federated API management. Uh, this session is being uh, organized by both APIDA and uh, NowPlay. We are partner uh, and uh, we are here to present you what advantages are there in choosing our products. So if you can uh, move to the next slide. Sure. Thank you. So these, uh, these sessions have been organized as a result of a lot of Q and A's we have received during our time in Paris during happy days. It, it was, it was quite, a, quite a success. We were quite uh, happy to see that uh, we had a few people coming to our kiosk and asking questions about federated API management. What, it, what does it mean and what is it? We had a really great feedback from um, also Gartner, who uh, has looked at us as being uh, the pioneer in this, uh, in this idea, in this uh, innovation. So we are quite excited about it. If we go to the next slide. So as, uh, as I was mentioning, this is the first one uh, of three. Uh, it's going to be in English. There will be also three that are in French for the French audience. Uh, this in particular is going to be uh, focused around the uh, gen generic, um, the generic functionality of the control plane and uh, what it is that is bringing to the, uh, to the table. So if you have any questions after, after the presentation and the demo, by all means, you can write in the, in the chat. We will be able to read it and, uh, and then you know, uh, respond to you. So uh, if you can go to the next one. So this is the list of the other uh, webinars, well, including this one, uh, but this is the complete full list. Uh, it is, by the way, uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, the, the webinar or uh, control plane, you want to have some, any uh, kind of, um, help on installing it, on having a demo prepared for you, uh, please do send an email to uh, Peter Mersch. Uh, again, you don't need to take notes now. Uh, this is recorded after all, and the presentation is going to be available. So, voila, without further ado, after this uh, 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 introduction, let's go to the next slide and look at the actual solution. So. What are we proposing here is a means of managing APIs that are on different platforms, runtimes, if you may. Uh, these are, uh, you can see them at the bottom, Broadcom, RPG, AWS. So APIDA uh, being uh, a, an expert in API management, a company uh, made out of experts in API management, we decide, decided to look at the holisticness of uh, API management and realized that in, in a lot of customers' engagements, we have uh, seen that customers have a whole variety of uh, um, API management suites. Uh, that could be a layer seven uh, API management suite or RPG or Gravity or Kong, WS2, IBM, Data Power, or even AWS. So the, their problem there is to find a one solution to manage those APIs for their developers, their clientele. So, and this is, this is why uh, we came up with this solution, this one window over all the different runtimes. This helps you to catalog your APIs, to govern them, uh, to apply security and overall security to all of them, uh, but also to actually check analytics and um, you know problems you might have with those APIs. If we go to the next uh, slide. So these are some of the capabilities that the product gives. 
Uh, first of all is the discovery of the APIs, as we will see in the demo. Uh, what happens is that you have just one place where you can see all your environments, all your APIs. Uh, what you can also do is to manage the consumption of such APIs via their API keys. This is not just the consumption, but also the generation of API keys and storing them in their different platforms. Of course, it goes without saying that as, you are as, as the APIs are consumed, you can see data analytics about it, but not only just uh, analytics about the, you know, the utilization, but also the non-utilization. Um, we can uh, help with uh, migrating APIs and provisioning APIs. So we will see that in, in a sec. Uh, also, there is this uh, wonderful tool about uh, scan API for security and quality issues that is there on the product, which enables you to see if your API is at risk when it comes to OWASP uh, specifications and other such um, issues. Uh, and finally, uh, last but not least, is the tool allows you also to create APIs on any platform. So this is through an open proxy uh, specification that uh, is a standard we hope that will become quite uh, globally accepted where it can, you can actually um, describe your API in a very generic canonical fashion, fashion and that would then be pushed on the different inter, uh, interfaces. So if we go to the next one. So, and without further ado, now it's time for the, um, for the demo session. Uh, this demo session uh, is going to be um, driven by my colleague Yasin from uh, Nowplay. And uh, so, yeah, I guess you can take it away. Thank you, Maurizio. So, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Yasin, and I'm a consultant at Nowplay. And uh, today I'm excited to demonstrate a PIDA and showcase how it can make your life easier with a full developer self-service experience. So let's get into it. Okay. So here I'm, uh, I'm at the, the developer portal. I'm currently in the logged out, so let's go ahead and log in. So here you have the welcome page. So everything on the developer portal is customizable to suit your preferences. Uh, here being an admin, I can directly edit with this edit mod toggle. You, you can edit any, any tab, everything, the blocks, the text, everything. You, you also have access to the source code for further customization. Um, here for, we have the APIs tab. You'll, you'll have the, uh, all your all the APIs in your organization that you published. You'll find them here. Here, here we have the API products tab. Uh, so, quick refresher: an API product uh, allow allow you to bundle multiple APIs into one subscribable package. So uh, let me show you a cool feature. This is the full text uh, search feature. So when you check it, uh, you'll be able to not only search the titles of the API products or API, but also on, in the documentation published with, with that API or API products, like the open API specification, some, some document, the random documentation that you put, here, for example, initiation. Here we have the open banking API product with the welcome page. We have, if I remember correctly, we have initiation here. We have an API with payment initiation. So let's, let's subscribe to this API product. First, we'll need to create an application. So. 
Dino Devo play Capito So here we created the application We can go to subscription Create new subscription We'll subscribe to the open banking products Let's take the test plan. So a plan is just uh, a way to enforce some rate limiting and maybe uh, monetize based, uh, based on, uh, on the test chosen, on the plan chosen, sorry. So here my subs uh, subscription is really requested. So let's, get, uh, let's go to the admin portal. Here, as, as you can see, directly as you open, uh, open the admin portal, we have the welcome page. And on the welcome page, we have the approval re requests. So let's approve myself. You, here in the admin uh, portal, you have a few more tabs, but we, we leave them for uh, an, another demo. So on the API products, we can see we have more uh, products because the, they're not published. We can see them on the developer portal. On the, uh, on the product, we have the assigned APIs. We have three APIs. We have the visibility. So uh, it's published on the developer portal. So we can see it on the developer portal. And most importantly, we can see our subscription. The demo now play a pizza. So let's get back to our developer portal page. Here we are subscribed. We can show. So this is uh, the URL for every API and the API key associated with it. You can see it. It's going to be. Removed later, don't worry about it. You, you can copy it, and of course, we can go ahead and see the APIs directly. Let's take the initiation because we search for it, try it out. Okay. I think you, you chose the key for the um, account planner, account uh, information, not the payment initiation. Oh, okay. So here we have an OPI, the open API specification. So let's let's try it out. So it's normal. We have a 401 uh, response status because we didn't put our API key. Let's get back and get it. Always get lost. It's uh, under applications. Yeah. And it's under applications. Yeah, yeah. And then subscriptions. So account information. We'll take the. We'll copy the API key. All right. So now let's try it again. And now we have a, f a fail to fetch course because we it didn't put a course policy on our gravity gateway. So that's okay. It means it works and we, we, uh, we can access the gateway as planned. <clears throat> so this, this is all for me. I think we've covered the main features about how to make your life easier with a full develop self service experience with Epida and Epida's dev uh, developer portal. So let's move to Q and A. I, okay. Wonderful. So indeed, if uh, there is any 
question regarding the 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 control plane uh, by all means do write it on the chat let's wait for this uh, for the chat to get a bit more okay i see that there is a question regarding the control plane um it says you have you have shown two um two tabs what are the difference between the two windows that you have shown so this uh this is a good question um so there are two the the control plane is divided into two views let's say uh one the there is the admin admin uh, environment that enables you to actually manage the subscriptions the plans the the apis where they are going the visibility the other one was the developer portal itself the developer portal can be an ad hoc developer portal so it can be developed by uh, in-house and it can be tailored as one wants uh, the idea is that only things that are allowed to be published will appear on the developer portal and the and yes the control plane does come up with uh, come with their own uh, developer portal a kind of you know uh test developer portal that you know if uh, if uh, if someone wants to get their feet wet on how to customize it how to um how to embellish brand it and see how it works they can use it but it, it is it is just a placeholder let's say one can i, I can bring so I hope that answers the question. Another question I see is regarding API keys. Uh, why do we need so many of them? Well, <laughs> this depends on the runtime, uh, indeed. So in the case of gravity, um, every API that is registered will have their own plan with their own API key so this does depend a lot on the uh on the runtime that you're using in layer 7 for example you would need only one api key which would work as a client id from oauth so yeah again that's the that's the question that, that's the that's the real pro problem between uh, <laughs> between speech mark between between codes so it, it does depend on your on your runtime. So another question I see is about grouping APIs. Are the products like groups? Yes, you you can see that as uh, as uh, as that. So in other words, you don't want to have your developers having to subscribe to each and every single api one by one so you can group them into an api product and the idea is that that api product would be more like a project or a uh, a collection of apis that are required for a specific use case like open banking like psd2 like uh, open health so all these uh, group of APIs, which are different, uh, but they would uh, they they serve a um, a single purpose. So hopefully, okay. Let's wait for another question. Maybe there is another one. Yep. So there is another question regarding grouping APIs. Can we do it across platforms? Well, I guess uh, platforms, that means interfaces. 
uh, meaning the runtime, uh, sorry, not interface, yeah, runtime. So uh, like between layer seven and uh, not at this point, not at this moment. So they are, uh, they are specific to the runtime. So you can only group up runtime uh, APIs or APIs that are running on the on the same runtime together and create a product with that at this moment. Wow, there are quite a few questions actually. Um, so let's take another one that uh, is, yeah, at the beginning we were talking about creating APIs from the interface. Yes, uh, there is this possibility for some runtimes uh, where, but this creation is using a, an open API, open proxy spec, API proxy spec, the specification we came up with. Uh, at the moment, it is on its first versions. So the amount of customizations you can have regarding logic and uh, implementation of security is quite limited, but it is going to uh, grow very fast, both in terms of uh, quantity of, uh, of, um, of runtimes included and also of uh, uh, functionalities. Okay, so some other questions, let's wait. Okay, it seems that uh, the lines have quieted down and a lot of the questions have been answered. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, at this point, um, I would say thank you so much for uh, joining us today at this webinar. Uh, thank you so much, Yasin, for presenting. Thank you, Maurizio. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing you at the next webinar, which will... Uh, tomorrow happen. morning. Tomorrow morning, uh, in French. So it's for the French speakers. So hopefully you can attend. Or the French Thank lovers. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thank you so much, everyone. And have a great uh, rest of the afternoon. Thank have a great you. day. Bye-bye.